Welcome back to Alexander Shares the Wild. So in this episode, I go to Dagny Johnson, Key Largo Hammock Botanical State Park. So how about that for a name? Uh, so it's pretty cool. It's right next to uh, Crocodile Lake on Key Largo. And uh, Crocodile Lake is a, a wildlife preserve uh, for crocodiles and, and other critters. So um, that is inaccessible. It's, it's basically um, open to like research and that type of thing. So uh, they don't let the public in there. There is a little butterfly garden you can go to and um, check out things and learn a bit. But uh, I primarily spent my time in the, in the Dagny Johnson uh, Park. So a little background on this this particular park. So the entryway, it's it's uh, it looks like you know you're going into there's that archway and it's kind of built up. There's some paved roads. So what occurred here is this land was going to be developed. I think it was back in the 70s, and so they had actually started construction and it was you know, slated to be built out with homes. And so Dagny Johnson uh, fought to preserve this land. And uh, I don't know all the details, but uh, she was successful. And so uh, it's some wonderful uh, natural land that that was preserved and uh, it was nice to be able to go in there. There's uh, multiple ecosystems, there's mangroves, um, the ocean side, um, there's hammock and uh, everything in between. So. It was a really great place to go. I went there over several days. It was much more productive than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, at one point I saw a bird I hadn't seen before. So I mentioned that in my mangrove video. Um, so that bird, I just, it drew me into the mangroves. And so I, I got rather acrobatic on the, on the mangrove roots, just chasing this bird down and was eventually able to get a little footage of that bird. Um, some neat, neat uh, uh, shots of some iguanas that were in the mangrove uh, where that bird was, so I'll show those guys. Um, also in this park, there's the white crowned pigeon, so that's an endangered species in the Keys, and they rely on the, the poison wood uh, tree, uh, so they, they feed, it's important as a food source for them. So I spent a whole day, day and a half, um, trying to understand this this white crowned pigeons uh, habits and routines and uh, eventually was able to get a little bit of footage so uh, I don't want to spoil it too much but yeah I was able to film uh, them um, they're a little skittish for a pigeon but I you know I was able to get uh, at least see them and uh, be able to share that so I, I'm excited about that but uh, yeah, seaside and the mangroves, I saw some, some interesting type creatures. And um, yeah, it was great uh, how much was in there. So uh, I look forward to sharing it with you. So anyway, I won't uh, spoil too much of what I saw here, but uh, it's, uh, it's a fun video and uh, enjoy. A little note on this snowy egret. Um, I was sitting in a park in my truck and it it lit right in front of me on the, the hood of my truck, right right on the driver's side. And uh, it just hung out there. So I think it saw me and it's like, hey, that's Alexander Shares the Wild. I want to be on video. Okay, I just wanted to do a quick orientation on the map here of where I was. Uh, so this is Florida, you can see, and then the, the Keys to the south. And so this was on Key Largo. right in here so it's uh it's on the 905 uh off of highway one that goes down all the way to key west and it's just this nice track to land all through here that goes all the way to the the coast and uh it's sizable and so then as i also mentioned there's the crocodile lake national wildlife refuge on the other side of the road and then that goes all the way uh, to the ocean on the other side uh, the Gulf so and that goes all the way to the north so that's a massive uh, reserve up through their refuge for the crocodiles so as I said I wasn't able to go in there uh, but on my Everglades video that's uh, gonna be coming 
um, I go into more detail on, on the crocodiles and whatnot. So that'll be a fun video. But anyway, that's where I was, and uh, let's jump right in. Okay, so in this video, I kind of broke things out into categories of, of animals. So crustaceans, mollusks, insects, birds, reptiles, that type of thing. Uh, so we'll start off with the crustaceans. Um, and this is in kind of the outskirts of the mangrove areas. These are uh, black mangrove roots sticking up. But there were these sandy uh, flat areas uh, with the holes uh, here and there. And... Uh, these little crabs um, would dodge into these holes. So they were kind of a little tough to film because most of the time they, they would just, you'd just see a blur of this crab racing across the sand and into the hole. Uh, but I was able to get a few here and there. But uh, they're very animated, fairly comical little crabs with the big claw, which I think they use for like uh, kind of territory display and probably to dig out their burrows but they walked uh, sideways had their little eyes sticking up so they were a fun little crab to watch and so we'll just watch them here for a bit So you can see here they're uh, they're pretty quick when they want to move out, and uh, they just run into those little holes. So this was another little crab. It was like right on the edge of the water in the mangroves, and uh, had some interesting uh, back feet, probably for doing a bit of swimming uh, or some maneuvering in in the mud. Um, so I kind of got a close up shot of that, but it was an interesting little crab and. Um, it had some cool tactics for escape, too. You'd see the slow-mo to a predator that flashing those little red uh, dots on its claws was probably pretty scary. And then if that didn't work, you could see when the water was in, even now they can kind of burrow into the mud. So he's got some tricks. That was a cool little crab. And sticking with crabs, there were some, these were along the rocks, um, right along the water's edge, not in the mangrove, but just out by the, actually the coast area. And uh, there were some little uh, rock, rock crabs. And just, uh, again, a different, different adaptation for living in, in this area. And they also had kind of the, little swimming type back feet too but they were uh, a more hardy looking crab and then in the park um, walking out of the park uh, one of the days I was there there was this hermit crab just cruising right uh, right across the road and uh, it was a pretty good sized uh, hermit crab and he was just on his way, on a mission, headed somewhere. But I always like seeing these hermit crabs. They're, they're quite a joyful little crab to, to see. They just always seem to be happy for some reason. They just got a happy look to them. And then back at the mangroves, um, we'll jump into some spiders here. But this was a nice little scene with a pelican feeding out in the ocean here. And you can see they don't always do like big, you know, high dives. They can uh, just do kind of a quick little up and down and, and catch fish as well. So they got various, uh, various ways that they'll hunt and fish. So I don't know what spider this is, but um, this was a beautiful spider. Um, so I took a little footage of it, but just below the black area that uh, silverish area was actually quite silver. It was really uh, metallic looking. So 
So this is an absolutely stunning spider. It's, a, it's an orb weaver, and it's actually called the spiny-backed orb weaver. But its face area um, actually looks like a jumping spider in some ways, but th there's far from a jumping spider. Um, but I did a little freeze frame. He has a... Almost you can see his, his face, but uh, it's kind of a, a neat little spider but absolutely beautiful with those spikes and I don't know the purpose of that actual uh, formation of his uh, abdomen but here I was able to finally get I'm getting better at uh, doing spider web filming so you can see their webs and this was a huge web it was probably maybe at least a foot and a half across it was uh, very large and uh, out in the open. So, I mean, the, just the construction of this amazes me. But well, you can see him sitting there uh, right in the center. And so just the, the threads that had to hold that out in that open space is amazing. So this again, this is a golden orb weaver. And I've uh, I filmed these in a couple other videos. Um, they're absolutely beautiful, and I always I I can't resist filming them and, and trying to always get a little bit of better filming of them. And I feel like uh, I'm I'm getting pretty good here. So you can actually see the fangs there, um, and a little bit more detail. But the patterning is is actually fantastic on these. I absolutely love it. So. Um, and their, the back of their thorax um, is a, a little bit furry and also has a, a silvery uh, tint to it, which is actually quite beautiful. But they also, they're a golden orb weaver or a golden silk orb weaver um, is what they're called. And they're native to the, uh, the Keys and uh, the hurricanes. Uh, the last hurricanes it went through, I think it was Irma. Um, just really wreaked havoc on this spider species and just blew a lot of them off the keys. So they're, they're, they're slowly coming back, um, but they, they didn't fare well in the hurricanes there for a bit. In the back there, you can see another little spider. That's a, a, another cleaning spider in the web, a different species. So we'll jump into some mollusks now. This was a, a neat little snail that I saw that had a nice conical uh, shell to it. So this is, this is in the hammock forest. Uh, it's not, not a, a water snail, but it had a more interesting, uh, means of, of travel. You could see the shell is, is quite a burden for this little, little snail. So just to haul it around, they kind of move their body forward and then pull the shell. It, it's almost like an inchworm type uh, movement, but it was a fascinating little snail, so I took a bit of time to, to film it making its moves. At first glance, uh, this looked like a planaria worm, uh, but it's not. It's actually a very flat slug, a uh, species I had never seen before. Um, so very unique, um, but had some cool, cool little eyes on him um, and just a, a neat little mollusk to, to observe for a bit. So he's very, uh, very uh, adept at uh, just maneuvering around and, and uh, flexing his body around for this, this habitat. So here he's trying to make a quick escape uh, into a little crevice. And so that was uh, fun to watch as he just kind of disappeared.
So as I uh, clambered around in the uh, very beautiful mangrove area, um, just on the roots, I didn't actually walk on the, the flat areas, um, I came across these these snails attached to the, uh, the mangrove trees. And they uh, were uh, various colors. And, uh, this one was a beautiful orange and rust kind of colored. Some nice stripe patterns, but absolutely beautiful snails. But these are... Uh, mangrove periwinkles and uh, they're just attached to the trees and uh, they apparently feed on uh, algae and fungi on the on the mangrove uh, tree leaves so just a really cool find um, to see these these different snails in the trees you can see they're pretty high up in the trees here and there but just a very beautiful snail and uh, these are these are non-aquatic so they don't go in the water um, this was a snail just uh, on the edge of the mangrove um, water area and so this this snail caught my eye and it was absolutely just stunningly beautiful the, the patterns on it. It almost didn't even seem possible. So I, I spent a bit of time trying to get the, the best I could to, to, sh to show or highlight kind of the, the shadowing effect of some of the lighter patched areas surrounded by black. They, it gave it quite a depth of field, but the, the shell was perfectly smooth um, and shiny but it had these areas that just kind of gave it this kind of depth of feel that they were like scales or something. Anyway, it was an absolutely beautiful, beautiful snail. And here we have, uh, this is actually on the, the ocean uh, coastline, again, where those rock crabs were. Uh, there were some other snails uh, that I came across, um, and these were were quite interesting, not as uh, vibrantly colored or exciting that way, um, but on the inside, uh, they had this nice uh, kind of trap door, and it when it sealed shut, it was like absolutely like almost watertight, it would seem, but very robust. Kind of opening to this snail um, with some interesting uh, kind of surface area but it was a very uh, cool species of snail and I have a little bit of footage of one uh, crawling around here in a bit but yeah just absolutely cool cool snail so I was really fascinated with them and kind of checking them out And here you can see a larger one. The smaller ones have a little bit more uh, contrasting patterns, kind of nice black and white uh, pattern to them. And I think the larger ones, uh, they kind of get a little bit duller as they, they mature. But here it was nice to see one uh, kind of crawling along. Very uh, kind of delicate. Uh, antennae on them, if that's uh, what they're called. In the same area, actually the same rock is where the snails were, there was a, uh, a chitin, and I had filmed one of these in a previous uh, video, um, but it's also a mollusk, so... If you were to peel this thing off, it's almost like a, a snail or slug type foot on the bottom of this critter. But it had some uh, pretty good uh, um, armory on it. Okay, here we're back into the forest. And this, this was a gem of a find to me because um, one thing on the, on the keys that they have are these uh, tree snails. Um, and they're quite sizable. There's, there's uh, different species 
And I think this is a Florida banded tree snail. Uh, there's, like I said, there's a few different species, but just when you see them, they're just an awesome find. They're absolutely beautiful. They're hard shelled, um, like a seashell. Um, and they live in the trees. They just uh, are attached to the trees in the forest. And this was the only one that I was able to find. And it just uh, was there along the path as I was walking along. And I, I just felt super happy when I saw it because uh, it's one, one animal I did want to see uh, on the keys. And here you can get a, a little size reference of uh, the snail. Okay, back where I filmed those last snails, um, the black and white white ones. Um, so here I had found uh, a very colorful jellyfish, and I was trying to get it back into the water because it was kind of washed up in the in the seaweed there. Uh, to try to get its tentacles to kind of drop down. But Probably still dunk Beautiful for, but... deep blue, uh, kind of a navy blue color with some purple tones. Um, and it was getting, the tide was kind of beating it around. But anyway, I, I was trying to show the tentacles on it, but that is a man of war. So uh, it'll give you a pretty, pretty good wallop. They have a uh, very um, potent nematocytes, um, the venom that they shoot out. Uh, from the tentacles uh, is pretty harmful. Won't necessarily kill you. Maybe young children, if they get uh, stung by a larger one, can have some difficulties and maybe succumb to it. But you, you don't want to get stung by them. But they're actually a beautiful creature, and I think their tentacles will drop down pretty far. So this is a little diagram. I just wanted to share the life cycle of a, a jellyfish. It's actually quite fascinating because they... They actually go through a period where they're almost like an anemone, the polyp phase, and then they layer up and then produce these jellyfish. It's, it's totally fascinating. So the reason why I show that is because this next species of uh, jellyfish that I find, and these are kind of in the flats of the mangroves and the shallow areas. And when I first saw them, they were just... Uh, these kind of, the, I thought they were anemones, but then I saw these other ones that were kind of, you know, pulsating. And I could tell it was a jellyfish. It wasn't an anemone. So it's a very fascinating species that actually almost reverts back to its polyp phase and, and uh, takes on um, kind of the approach of an anemone as far as food uh, feeding. And so they'll go into the shallows and then go upside down and pulsate until they're kind of comfortable with their situation and then be like an anemone. Um, so I flipped this one over so you can kind of see it's actually a jellyfish slash anemone. And there's another one you can see. I was totally enamored by this creature. I had never seen it before. And apparently uh, it's symbiotic with an algae species that lives inside of it. So that gives it its green colors. And so it stays in the shallows partly. Uh, so the algae gives uh, some nutrients or energy to the jellyfish. And then the, the algae benefits uh, by being in the shallows uh, from the jellyfish. So anyway, it's called a Cassiopeia jellyfish, upside down jellyfish. So now we're on to the insects. So this was just, uh, I would see these dragonflies here and there, um, somewhat common and uh, kind of a typical looking dragonfly. They had a nice kind of navy green color to them. Um, and then this dragonfly was um, just, just at the perimeter of the mangroves uh, and forest area. And it was just absolutely beautiful again with the nice rusty wing color with just you know, dark black spots and kind of a reddish head. Um, nice golden stripe down its uh, 
its body there. So I had never seen this dragonfly anywhere else. And they just seem to be um, unique to that, that particular habitat. And it's also neat to see on drag, dragonflies divination on their, their wings. It's, I always like seeing that. This um, little moth was on a concrete wall. It was very windy this day, uh, but it, it had beautiful contrasting colors of orange, kind of an orange mask uh, on its head. And you could see how windy it was, but just a beautiful gray with a kind of a cream uh, outline on its wings. Um, just a really beautiful moth. All righty, continuing on with insects. It was just amazing. Uh, another stunning little insect in the form of a caterpillar. And this one was uh, walking um, across the road at the, the entrance to the park uh, where they had started to develop for the, uh, the housing development. So this is on the paved road going in and this, this little guy was just uh, cruising along. Um, but just very, uh, very nice coloration as far as uh, the black and, and the gray and then a nice kind of blood red head and then some orange in uh, in the neck area and then these beautiful like just fluffs of uh, like white hairs shooting out in all directions so just a fantastically uh, beautiful beast and uh, not sure where it's headed. I eventually uh, got it off the road so it didn't get stepped on, but um, I really enjoyed watching this little critter, and I don't know what uh, what the adult stage is for this caterpillar, but uh, it was a nice treat to see that. So, again, butterflies. On this one, I finally got pretty lucky, uh, these orange butterflies. There were a couple. There's a Julia butterfly and then another, and I'm not sure which one this is, but... This one sat still long enough to where I could get just some beautiful footage of it with its wings closed, showing the venation of the wings. And uh, just a stunningly beautiful butterfly, even with the wings closed. And then finally it opened its wings up and, and the sun shined on it a little bit. It's just an amazing kind of metallic orange super bright there really is nothing more beautiful than nature I mean it's it's totally incredible to me and that's why I make these videos try to share some of this stuff that a lot of people will never see but I feel really uh, lucky to get out and see these things and hear these things. So this was a little bird, um, beautiful song, and he was just going at it in the morning. And I, I uh, tried to get a little bit of footage of him, and he was darting around in there and singing up a storm. But uh, we'll just listen to him here. It's, and I do get a little glimpse of him at one point. Here we have a red-bellied woodpecker. So these are common throughout the eastern United States, but it was a new bird for me, uh, seeing it first in Florida. And uh, just really uh, nice patterning on its back with the, the black and the white. Um, and then just a beautiful kind of orange, almost metallic-y, reddish uh, cape to it there on its head. Um, 
or hood. So very, very beautiful woodpecker. Um, as far as being a red-bellied woodpecker, uh, not so much as far as a red belly. Um, but you can see uh, the classic uh, kind of stiff tail on the woodpecker. It's kind of a third foot as they navigate the vertical habitat. So very neat bird. Okay, now I'm in the mangroves. I was drawn in by this bird that flew into the mangroves and uh, it looked unusual and I, know I, I knew I hadn't seen it before. So off I went clambering into the mangroves. And so here you can see, see it just, just a bit and uh, I couldn't quite see it well enough and then it flew away. Uh, but this was the the mangrove roots, and uh, I never walked on like uh, kind of the wet area below. I just clambered around on these these roots. They were all very sturdy and and strong, and so I felt like a chameleon uh, walking walking through this habitat. But it was quite magical in here. I absolutely loved these roots. And just walking around is good exercise and, and quite a bit of fun walking around in here. So here I am, I'm, I'm trying to get a little closer to this bird. And then finally I, I, I get a touch closer and he doesn't fly. And so I'm able to see him and it's, it's quite a, a beautiful uh, heron. And it turns out that it's a uh, yellow crowned night heron. And uh, that was my first sighting of, of this bird. So that was a nice treat. So I continue my journey to try to get just a touch closer. And uh, I do get just a little bit better footage here where you can see him. But he's a beautiful bird and uh, he was a little skittish. So he didn't let me get too close. That was as good as I could do. And then here we have the cracking of the wings of a white crowned pigeon. So that set off my next endeavor, which took me like a day and a half trying to, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, trying to figure out the habits of this, this pigeon. And um, so I just spent a bit of time uh, chasing this pigeon down and figuring out where it was and, and how it was living. And as I'm walking through the forest here, uh, there was this, I never got real close to it, but there was this, this cool raptor. Could have been a Cooper's hawk uh, that just kept flying. It would fly from branch to branch in front of me. It was really a neat experience. So these pigeons, um, I would get close and then they would just bolt and there would be, they had a very distinct cracking of their wings as they, as they took off. It's almost like a warning type intentional cracking of the wings. So I would just see this blur of pigeons flying away as soon as I got close, but I didn't give up. And eventually I got a little bit of footage. I had to thread the needle and, and get a little, little footage of this one. And again, you can see one bolting out of there. And I was persistent and alas, I got a little bit of good footage. So enjoy the endangered white crowned pigeon.
here I just want to share a uh, cactus that I, I saw sporadically uh, on some of the keys and it is appropriately named a barbed wire cactus. So it's a really, uh, really neat cactus to see. It's uh, quite beautiful and um, just grows in these, these long, these long barbed wire type uh, growths. So that was a, a, a nice find as well on the keys. And jumping over to some reptiles, these were the iguanas from the, the yellow crown night heron that I, I saw that drew me into the mangroves. And then uh, I also came across uh, these iguanas. So this was a beautiful male in the sun doing some territorial displays with his, uh, his neck flap um, or throat flap and just beautiful orange uh, spikes off of his back. And you can see off to the left there, the females are always kind of subdued in coloration, but there's a nice uh, large female sitting there as well. And then I did uh, speak to somebody in the park, um, the, a volunteer that's uh, working there. Um, and they said uh, a day or two after I had filmed this, uh, they were gonna have a crew come in and and uh, do some housekeeping on the iguanas because they're an invasive species. So get rid of some of those. Um, and then this was a neat little lizard that I just happened to come across. I don't know what kind it is, but it was a cute little uh, lizard, a little bit skittish, and it could have been a, a, a skink of some sort. I'm not entirely certain. And uh, I did ask a couple people, rangers, and nobody seemed to know what species it is. So with that, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.